What's up guys, I'm Intopaz here and welcome to a new tutorial and in today's video I'm gonna share with you how to do the simulation of Axial 2 Crush so without wasting any time let's get into business first we're gonna start to make our geometry and it will be a square tube of a certain dimension so we go to mesh and shape measure and then we want a shell box and here you will put the following dimensions minus 18.4 18.4 18.4 18.4 18.4 it's a square and the height is 95 and the size of the element let's say it's 2 millimeters and here we say it's square cube and create and then there you have it then you go to element tools element edit you delete the top and the bottom sides so delete propagate the top one and the bottom one and here you go you have your square tube now we're gonna make a plate on the top we go, we go to mesh again shape measure and then instead of shell we make it solid here it says minus 25 25 minus 25 25 and it starts from 95 and ending is let's say 98 the sizing just keep it 2 2 2 here I say it's a rigid plate. Great. Later on, we can apply the displacement on this rigid plate. Okay. So next, we want to fix the bottom side. We go to create entity. We create a node set first. Create bottom nodes. And then by area, make mark the area. You double check. Then apply. Now I want to make a set part of the tube. We need to do this because later on you will see we need this set part. So here, tube set part, click by part, and then apply. So now we go to keyword. We want to define the curve, the displacement, displacement, new. When time is 0, displacement in 0 is 0. And when time is 1, our displacement is 47.5. So we are compressing 50% of the tube. Insert, insert again. I forgot to insert the first point. Insert. This one, delete. Accept. Now you have, this is a displacement curve. Okay. Now you go up here boundary describe motion rigid and this is the rigid plate degree of freedom should be in 3 because it's moving in the z direction the curve that we have this uh, we have defined just now is the displacement curve so this is 2 put the displacement and here don't forget to put minus because our curve is positive and we want the plate to go down in the negative direction so here I would say displacement of rigid plate except here yeah, I just put one except now we go down SPC set we want to fix the bottom nodes so it's it is fixed in all direction here I define it as fixed bottom except okay now I want to define the interaction between the tube and the rigid plate I go to contact automatic surface to surface but here I would recommend to use automatic surface to surface mortar because of two reasons. First, because we will use implicit and second, because we have a contact between the surface of plate and the edge of the tube. The key word here is edge and surface. That's why I would recommend to use surface to surface mortar. So we'll click new ID and here I would say tube and plate. This one is three. And this one is 3 
So now the slave is the part that is moving, which is the rigid plate, and the master is the part that is fixed or the part that is not moving. So it is a square tube. But here we are using the mortar contact and it is better to make the softer part as the slave. Later on, I'm gonna make this tube from aluminium and this rigid plate from steel. So the softer part here will be the aluminium tube. And if that's the case, it is better to be the slave and the rigid plate is the master. Okay, coefficient of friction. It's very important to define in this case, otherwise the result will be different, especially because we are using implicit. Now, extra keywords that you need to define, you click on the ABC options. Here, put equal to 2. So the shell thickness is defined in the contact. And then I gap is equal to 2. This is also important, I get to put equal to 2, especially if you are using implicit. Otherwise, the reading of the forces in the output might be different. Then accept. Now that we have defined the contact between the tube and the rigid plate, we need to define the contact between the tube and the tube itself. So I go to automatic single surface mortar. Double click, new, here I put tube. So contact and here number three, this is the tube coefficient of friction, the same and uh, the same as before. Here the shell thickness is two and then I get equal to two. Now I go to control, control accuracy. Here I want to put this one equal to one. This is the implicit accuracy flag. So if I put this one, we should have more accurate result. But of course, the simulation will take longer time. This one is equal to 1 and this is equal to 4. Okay. This is the objective stress update and this is the invariant node numbering for shell and solid elements. This is the part set ID that we have defined before. So click on it and accept. Now we define the implicit keywords. Control implicit auto. This one automatic automatically adjusted time step. This is important. Implicit dynamics. Here we are using static analysis so zero. Implicit general here one because we want the implicit analysis. And then the initial time step, I would say 0 0.001. This one depends on your termination time and depends on your displacement. The termination time, I would make it equal to 1. So my practice is always to put this DT, DT0 as the termination time over 1000. But again, it depends on the situation and the displacement and the geometry and so many other factors. Except done. Implicit solution. This is nonlinear. And then implicit solver. Keep it the solver number four. Okay, so this is the five implicit keywords that I would recommend. And then control termination, the usual guy. This is one. Now we want to define the section for the shell. Let's say new. This is tube. Thickness is 1.2. Element formulation is 16. It will take longer time, but uh, it's okay because our mesh is quite coarse. This is the shear factor 0.83. Number of integration point 2, you don't need to change this because we are using already fully integrated element. Now go to the solid, new, here is rigid, accept, done. Now I would want to define the material. Okay, 
So I go to material number 18 for the aluminum and the material properties. I would take it from here. This is from Parmentel's engineering website. I've mentioned it before and for your convenience, I will just put the link down. So you copy here and you can paste it here. So it's easier for you to copy and paste. New ID. This is the title, the type of the aluminium. The density is here. So basically you just copy paste. This is the not efficient way of doing this. There is another way which I've shown you before is you edit the keyword file using a text editor and you just copy and paste from here to the keyword file using a text editor. Then accept. And here is the rigid material for the plate. They say this is for steel and for steel density 7.8 E minus 6. This is 200 and this is 0 0.3. Now this one is the constraint for the rigid material. Make it 1 and it is constrained in the X and Y. So the rigid plate is only allowed to move in Z. So this is 4. And the rotation should be 7. So it's not it's not allowed to rotate in any axis or in any direction except. Now that we have defined the material in the section, we link the material and the section to the part. So the square tube is shell and it's aluminium. Except the rigid plate is solid and is rigid. Then accept. We are almost done here. Now we define the output. Database. First I go to D3 plot and make it 0 0.01. Accept. Then I go to ST option. Here I put 0 0.001. Enter. I want the boundary condition forces and uh, I want the nodal forces. You can click on this one also, nodal out, nodal output. And then reaction forces and rigid body output. I think that's all that I need. Now one more thing that I need to do in the database is to go down here, nodal force group, and put the bottom group nodes. So it will calculate the forces at the fixed node down here. Okay, so I think that's all. Let's control save. Square cube. Copy this one and save. Okay, it's already saved. So we open here the manager. This is the file that we just did and uh, run and hope we don't have any problems. This is going to take some time so I'm just going to fast forward. Okay now finally the simulation has finished. 17 minutes and 52 seconds. Uh, before I open the results, I just want to go up here and show you a few things. You see in each iteration or in each time steps, there is a certain number of iteration. Sometimes it's only three, sometimes it's four. And if you go up, sometimes eight. And uh, if you go even higher, you can see sometimes it's 12. Okay, these iterations depends on the equilibrium, whether it's established or not. And actually we are the one who decide the tolerance for this. And if you notice, if the value becomes less than one, e to minus 3, then the equilibrium will be established and it will proceed to the next iteration. So this value and this value actually we are the one who decide it. And we decide it from control implicit solution. So this is the tolerance for the du over u. And this is the tolerance for the energy 
uh, EI over E0. So when the value of this one and this one becomes less than this and this, then it will establish the equilibrium and it will jump to the next time step and proceed with the simulation. So if we want our simulation or if we want the iteration to be less, then we can actually increase this number and this number and then the uh, iteration will become less. But of course, that will affect the overall final results. And speaking of results, let's see our results. So here you see our guy is becoming compressed and compressed. We have two folds and then things finish. Okay. All right. You might see there is some gap here. This gap is actually because we put the shell thickness equal to 2 in the contact definition if you remember so if you go to element tools and sorry if you go to model then appear and you click on thickness you can see the plate is actually in contact with the thickness of the shell not the surface of the shell okay so now let's see our results I go to post processing. I want to extract the post. So here I have SQ option. I have more than one way actually. You can do from here. From the boundary output data. Since we have only one moving boundary condition. So this is the forces of this moving boundary condition. Which is the moving plate. So the Z forces. I plot. And then I have it here. Okay, so I can actually let's say I want to save it. And then the end force. This is one way to find the force. The second way is from the nodal output force. So here you load the file, and we have many points here. This one is for each of the fixed node down here. So if I want a similar result to the one before, I need to click on all and then click on Z. And then I need to sum all of them. So sum curves, so I will get 45, which is similar to the uh, previous result. And uh, the third way is to use the reaction forces. So here it will calculate the reaction between the plate and the tube. So if I load this one, so I have two contact definitions. So I have two options here. One, this is a slave, the force of the slave, the force of the master. And this one is for the uh, tube uh, self-contact. Okay. So if I click here, I click on that. So again, I will have the same uh, result, which is minus 45 or 45 depends on your direction. We already have saved the force file. Now I want to save the displacement. So I click on this one, rigid body output. I load. I have only one rigid body in this file. So this is the one. And then I go down to resultant displacement. So this is my displacement, save. And then I put displacement and save. Okay, now here I go to XY plot. I have the two files here. So I want to cross them. I want to plot the force versus the displacement. So our X is the displacement. Our Y is the force. And I plot. So I have something like this. Y scale, I can say I just put it minus. And this one I copy, you put it here. I want to flip my curve. So the curve now is flipped. So zero. So this is my result. Why I'm plotting the force and the displacement? Because of course I want to compare to some reference. 
here title the x is the displacement the y is let's say is a force okay so what is the reference that i want to compare with this is actually this paper okay this paper is actually by two of my lecturers Qasim Abdullah, Yulfian, Aminanda, both of them were my lecturers in my undergrad degree. So if you notice, you have the same dimension, the same geometry, and this is the force, this is the force, and this is the displacement. You can see the displacement is uh, almost the same, not quite the same, but it's quite acceptable. Okay. This one is here, let's slip here, so this view is the same as this view. So we are getting uh, overall a good result, but it's not the best result. Of course, we can improve the things. And this is the graph, the experimental graph here. The maximum force that they get is 30,000, and the result here I'm getting... 45. Of course, there is a big variation in the results. That is because there are few things that I haven't checked, like the material, what type of material they're using. But uh, the trend overall is quite acceptable. Okay. Now that we are done with the implicit simulation, that was for the quasi-static axial tube crush. Now we're going to move to the next part of this video, which is the dynamic axial tube crush. Since it is dynamic, then we can use the explicit simulation. So we remove all the implicit keywords. So this one, delete. Delete as well. Delete. Delete. And delete. This accuracy also I can delete. I don't need any accurate results right now because I will not compare my result to any reference for the dynamic simulation. And for the section, I can use just the default element formulation. I don't need very accurate result. Number of integration points, let's say I can make it three or four, just put it three, then accept. Now for the dynamic tube crush, I remove the prescribed motion and what I do here, I apply an initial velocity on the rigid plate. So with velocity generation, I want to apply it, I want, I want to apply it on a part. So this is a rigid plate and the velocity is minus, minus 10. Now what else I want to do? I want to check the mass of this plate. Measure mass by by part here remember then the mass is 0 0.0585 this value is in kilograms and it is very small to crush the aluminum tube so we need to increase the mass of this rigid plate I can do it the same trick like we did before in previous video by increasing the density of this rigid plate but for this video i want to apply a mass element and the mass element i want to apply it somewhere in the middle so i want to find where is the middle of this guy i can do like this make a cross here click here and i click here so now i know this is the element on the middle there is no node in the middle so i will split this element so i go to element edit and then split this is a solid this is the one i think okay so right now i have a node in the center of this rigid plate so i go to identify node so this is the node 6412 so i go to model keyword element mass element Click on new ID, this is the ID of the new element. 
and here I paste this is the ID of the node here in the mass I put it 10 and this mass element will belong to rigid plate except done now you have this blue dot here which indicates the mass element okay and next what I want to do I want to change the termination time control termination from 1 to I want to put it 8 here before we were using the implicit so when it is implicit the one here doesn't mean one second or one millisecond or any physical time when we are using implicit one here mean only a time step to simplify things when you are using implicit we don't have any time but now we're gonna use explicit so the time gonna be important so when I put one here it will mean one millisecond if I put let's say eight it means 8 milliseconds and accept done okay so I believe that's all for our case now we converted this one from implicit quasi static implicit to a dynamic explicit the next thing we're gonna do I will play with this uh, tube a bit I will change the shape of this tube so how I'm going to do that? First of all, I go to Element Tools, Transform, and then I want to scale. I want to scale one of the sides. So this side, the side that's facing me, I want to scale it in the x direction. I want it to. I want to make it two over three of the original length. So if it is two over three, can be one point five smaller than the original length. So I click by element, propagate here, copy element. I make it a new part so things become easier. I say this is part number three. Then I scale down. Now, as you can see, I have uh, this green side, which is supposedly two over three of the original length of the square tube. Why it is two over three? Uh, later on, you will know the reason. So I click on F2. I just highlight this one for the time being. Now I want to rotate this one. I go to rotate, click the origin. This is the origin of rotation around the Z axis and the rotation is 100 degree. Copy elements again and click by part. And uh, okay, so this is another side of our new geometry. Now the third side, again, I click by element and I do the same thing, I rotate. Okay, so I have one, two, three sides. So if you can see where I'm going, I'm actually going to make a hexagon tube. For the next three sides of the hexagon tube, I can make the same trick. I can just rotate one by one and make three more sides but instead of doing that i'm going to take a different approach i'm going to reflect okay so these three sides i'm going to reflect and i will have three more sides of the hexagon so pick the origin the origin should be any points on this edge or on this edge okay now i click by part I want to project I want to reflect everything and then the reflection should be normal to a plane going like this okay but as you can see here it's not normal to X or Y or Z so what I can do I click here and click on three nodes so I click one two three three nodes these three nodes will define the normal of the reflection So copy elements and then reflect and there you go you have the hexagon and then accept okay so before you proceed i need to do two things before i can say this is complete I need to do two things or actually three the first one is check my normal so you can see here some of them are green some of them are purple so show the normal if you click my part you can see that some of them going out but two of them are going inside so I need to change the normal of this and this one 
So reverse the normal, unclick on this, and then by element, here this one and this one. Then you click on reverse. Okay, so you clear again, show normal, and then click by part, and now everything is going out. Okay, that's done for the first thing. The second thing is I want to duplicate the nodes. Duplicate the nodes meaning I'm fixing the side. You can see all the sides of the hexagon are not fixed together. So I just click on merge duplicate nodes and then accept. Now they are fixed. Now I click on F2 and I show everything. And as you can see, the hexagon is not actually in the middle. So what I can do, I hide this plate first and I just see both of them, both of the tube. I go to element tools, measure. I just want to measure from here until here. So the distance in the X is this one. So what I need to do is to translate half of this distance. So I go to translate. Now I just transform and translate in the X direction is good by part and only half of this distance. So this is three, this is one, this is uh, 45, so give four, six, seven here. And then half of five is 25, so two and nine. And then here is six and move positive X. Now you can see in the X is aligned. Now we go do the same thing for the Y direction here. You can see the distance in Y is this one. So again, I move in Y by half of this distance. This is 3, this is 1, 5, this is 45, maybe 46, and this is 3, this is 2.5, be 2.8. Then by part, negative y and then accept now if you look at the bottom side or the bottom view you can see it's in the middle now click on f2 again it can check see the rigid plate the rigid plate is actually barely covering the hexagon so i want to make this rigid plate bigger so the solution for this is scale so scale by part, this is the one, and the origin should be 0, 0, 0, here, you can see 0, 0 in X and Y, I scale in X and Y only, and the scaling is, let's say, 1.1, no need to copy the element, scale up, scale up, okay, now I think it's enough, except okay so now i save this file browse and i want to say this one is dynamic square here i say square dynamic and then save save i open this okay this is the file copy i paste again this copy will be hexagon dynamic so now we are in the square dynamic file I have a copy of this already, so what I can do simply here, I can just delete the hexagon. I better delete from the keyword manager. My part, and then delete. And then save. Now that I saved it, I can just run the file. Copy here, browse, then square dynamic. So while waiting for this guy, I can modify the second file. So this one is running fine. It says 9 minutes. Maybe it's 90 minutes. Okay, it's 10 minutes, 9 minutes. Okay, you can just ignore the warning. 
Okay, now this is the hexagon dynamic file. So I need to delete that square tube. So element edit, delete, delete by part. I delete the elements from here, not the part. I delete the element only because you will see later why. I delete this one except now I just move copy square square tube is I pick on square tube then by part except now that I did like this I don't need to define the material and the section and also the contact between this tube and the rigid plate so if you go here you can go to part part this one you need to delete it it's the remnant of part 3 before this yes yes delete so now you are almost ready to run the simulation the last thing you need to do here is update the node set okay you see the part set is already updated although that we have changed the geometry but since we change back the part from 3 to 1 so this one is updated but the node set is not updated so what we need to do before we can run the simulation we need to update this node set so clear then click pick by edge one two three four five then six apply okay so now note edit just want to make sure there is no extra nodes delete unreferenced node delete okay hexagon dynamic the right file the right folder then save okay now we can run this file simultaneously also okay finally it's done so for the square tube it took 12 minutes and for the hexagonal it takes like 29 minutes actually the second one is a bit longer because uh, we run both of them simultaneously and another thing that you can do to make the simulation run faster is to change the type of the contact so before for the implicit we used the mortar for both of the contacts if you change it to the normal automatic single surface and the automatic single surface to surface without the mortar then it will take less time so what you can do actually the easy way is you open the keyword file with the text editor and then you just delete this one delete this one then you save and you run again and you will see that they will it will take slightly less time all right so before i open the results i want to make, highlight one thing before i made this hexagonal i scaled down the side of the square tube by a factor of two over three and the reason i did that because i want both of them to have the same mass so if you go to here element tools measure and then you measure the mass of the part you see this is the mass of the hexagonal tube and if you do the same here element measure measure the mass by part and you see it will they will have the same mass so they have the same mass the same keyword the same contact definition uh, and the same load so the difference in the result will be because the, the difference in the geometry so now let's open the result first i want to open the result of the square tube so i open this one so we zoom out and we play and we see the deformation of the tube okay so it will bounce back now I want to extract the results so I can go to uh, reaction forces load and then tube and plate the Z forces and here I have the force 
Okay, so save. This one is force. And then rigid body. I want to take out the displacement. So plot. This is the displacement. It will reach some maximum value, then it will bounce back. So this is the displacement. Now I go to XY, I cross this time the displacement is X, the force is Y. Why I'm plotting the force and the displacement? Because here I have this guy. So now you can compare this is the dynamic response and this is the quasi static response of the tube. So now we open the hexagonal and see how it deforms. Okay, zoom out a bit. And you see how it's beautifully folding. Okay, just want to see from the top. See the crushing and the folding of the hexagonal tube. Okay, now we do the same thing. Extract the force and the displacement. So as key option, reaction forces, master and the plate, then plot. This is the force. Save force and then rigid body output. I want the displacement of the plate. Save displacement. Save and then I go here. X Y plot. I cross the displacement and the force. Then I plot. All right. So now I can put this one here and this is the other guy. And as you can see here. This is for the square tube and this is for the hexagonal tube. Okay, well, if you want to compare other things, you can say you want to compare the displacement. So I plot here. This is the displacement of the rigid plate. And then I do the same here. The displacement of the rigid plate in the case of the square tube. So if I plot side by side, you can see there is a slight difference, only a slight difference. You can see when it is a square tube, it reaches minus 25 and the maximum deflection is 26.3. And when it is hexagonal tube, the deflection is 25.2. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and see you next time.